So today I wanted to give you just a little bit of an update on some of the goings on here at the lot. We've had a busy, busy last oh, week or so. The temperatures were getting up there pretty good into the high 40s. The weather wasn't so bad that uh, people were actually coming around and we had lots of foot tra traffic and managed to close a few deals. So the little 2008 Chevy Aveo that used to sit here, sold. The 2011 Jeep Compass, well, as you can see by the sign in the window, sold. And as we run down the front line here, you'll notice at the very end of the line, we're missing something. The 2015 Jeep Compass, which was sitting here, sold. And as we come around the back side of this line here, the 2014 Chevy Cruze that was sitting here, it too is sold. And I'm not even sure if it made it to the video, but the 2008 Hyundai Sonata, the maroon one, that I took on trade for the, the uh, 2014 Tiguan, well, a good friend of the family came in this week and she was in need of a car and well, we sold that too. So it's been a busy, busy week around here. So what we're trying to accomplish this week is inventory building. So dad is going to be working hard on the auction list, trying to find some new inventory and that will create a lot more work for us in the shop as far as getting them ready and getting them cleaned up for the lot. However, it's that time of year. Spring is here and it's time to build that inventory. And one piece of inventory that we're still waiting for parts for is this 2010 Mazda Tribute. Now, I don't think I gave you guys an update on what's going on with the Mazda Tribute, but I recorded a little clip a little while back, so I'm gonna insert that right now, and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit more. So you ever wonder what a 2.5 four-cylinder Ford looks like on the inside? So we thought we were having a problem with the valves on this 2.5. So we took the head off, we replaced all the valves. I say we, because I think I had a little bit to do with it too, but I really didn't. Anyways, replaced all the valves, put the thing back together, and we still had a misfire on cylinder number three. So once we got the time to tear it all apart again, we got down to the business end of things, and we found this. On a couple of these pistons, We had a few broken uh, ring lands and, and uh, rings on them. So we were getting some low compression on cylinder number two and three. Two wasn't as bad, but number three was really bad. Let me show you number three. So number three had a chunk taken right out of her and uh, all there's a bad spot right there. All of the uh, rings were broken. And if you look right here, right at the top of the piston, right where my finger is, you'll see there's a burn mark right through. So it is unfortunate that we missed that the first time around after putting the head gasket in and uh, all the valves and all that sort of thing. But what had happened is once we got everything put back together, we still had a cylinder number three misfire. So we did another leak down test and with the leak down test found that there was air or compression coming up through the valves. Thinking that we had a valve issue again, we tore it apart and uh, come to find out there was no um, problem per se with the valves. We're just going to reseat the valves, found a couple of the bad pistons and well this vehicle is going to get four brand new pistons all new ring kits and we'll put her back together and it should be as good as new and uh, if it is then we'll have no problem standing behind this thing with our standard 90-day warranty so just rest assured guys because i know some of you down in the comments are going to be saying well gee you know if it had that many problems i don't want to buy it well guess what we fixed the problems and this thing will be up and uh, running in no time and uh, hopefully be able to get it up back on the lot and, uh, and ready for sale for someone to take home and enjoy it for another 200,000 kilometers or 150,000 miles or whatever you're gonna get out of it. Uh, it's still in really good shape, so I think that uh, for the price that we're gonna have on it, it'll be a really good addition to someone's family. 
So if we go back to our auction list idea again that I was talking about for building inventory, I want to show you guys what it is that I do when it comes to finding vehicles to buy on the auction block. I'm going to set the camera up with one of our online options, which is Adesa, and we'll give you a quick rundown on how it is I choose vehicles and how I look for them. So the first thing that we can do is we can look for the auction at a specific city. So if we go up here to our search tab, we go down to run list and I can choose the city that I want to run and narrow down the specific vehicles that I'm looking for. The internet's running slow this morning. So in this pane here, I can search Odessa, Halifax. Now there are two auctions close to us. One is Halifax, Nova Scotia. The other one is Moncton, New Brunswick. I'll come over here and I'm going to choose the date, which is today. And I've already done this, so I'm just showing you guys. We want to search all lanes, but we come down here to odometer and I don't want to see anything pop up with over 100,000 miles or 160,000 kilometers. In years, we want to be able to finance these vehicles. So we're looking at 2010, probably to 2016. The reason why I'm stopping at 2016 is because I'm looking for certain price range vehicles and I want them to fall within that category. So I'm going to hit search and it's going to give me a list of all the vehicles that are running that day that fall within the criteria that I've chosen. And in this particular case, it tells me there's 438 vehicles that match that. So one thing that I do like to do is rather than just get a list of vehicles, I will select over here where it says view run list with photos and it will load a thumbnail of each video as it, or sorry, of each vehicle as it comes through the lane. So starting off with this 2017 Nissan Rogue S and scrolling down through all the bunch. So I'm not going to go through every single list because I've already created a list. But from here, I'm able to go down and choose what I want for a vehicle by adding it to a watch list. So if initially it fits the criteria, I can click this button here that says watch list and it will add it to a list on my Odessa account. So once I have my list generated, I can now go up to my watch list button over here. And now it has generated a list of vehicles and I picked 17 out of tomorrow's auction that I can go through. So for example, we've got this 2015 Kia Soul, 2012 Chrysler 200, 13 Venza, and so on and so on. These are vehicles that we would no, have no problem bringing home. Uh, some of them might need a little bit of work, some of them might be perfect, but it's all dependent upon the cost of the vehicle. It will certainly depend on what we pay for them. Now, one thing you'll notice is there's a couple of vehicles here that I've chosen that don't have any descriptions. And sometimes the auction is a little bit slack when it comes to putting descriptions or condition reports on the site so out of all of these that are out of there, I think there's five of them all together, that I cannot choose to buy those vehicles unless I'm willing to take a stab in the dark because otherwise, if I do, then I have no clue what the condition is of these vehicles other than it's giving me a title and mileage. So as we roll through on a live block, as the auction scrolls through the pages, Every single one of these vehicles will now be highlighted so that I can remember that these are what I chose. Now at this point I've gone through every single vehicle and I've narrowed it down from 25 originally on the watch list to this, uh, this group of 17, again with the exception of the five that have no descriptions. Those may come uh, along the way, but as it sits right now we're probably not going to do anything with them. So now we're down to 12. So we can search through these 12 and as they come up, these are the 12 likely that we will be bidding on today. So unfortunately, I can't show you very much when it comes to the live auction. I can show you the vehicles going through, but because we have a dealer agreement with Odessa and several other auctions, I'm not at liberty to show you guys the results of the selling vehicles. Besides, this is my bread and butter. When I buy a vehicle at the auction, we're going to bring it home, we're going to recondition it, and we're going to mark it up and make some profit on it. So it's kind of hard to make money when everybody knows exactly what you paid for your vehicles. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little tutorial through my Odessa account so that I can show you guys exactly what it takes for us to go through a list of 400 vehicles, narrow it down, 
and find some that we're willing to bid on. So now it's time to log on to the auction and see what's going on. Well, after sitting in front of the computer for a couple hours this morning, out of that original 25 unit list, I narrowed it down to 17 vehicles we actually wanted to bid on. Out of those, I only got one, a 2014 Chevy Cruze, and I got a phone call bid on a 2014 Kia Sorento. And what a phone call bid means is that the reserve was not met, and they were gonna reach out to the owner of the vehicle to see if they would accept my high bid or counter with another one. That happens a lot in this business, so we're waiting on that phone call in hopes that we can get another Sorrento for the lot. So guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that little detailed run through the auction list as well as the update on the lot. There are four links in the description box below. I hope you can check them out. The first one being the link to my bonfire.com, which is where we can get old car auto guy t-shirts and hoodies. Hope you can support the channel in one more fashion there as well. Check out the other three links. One of them also being Straight Six Fan, who is my co-host for the Thursday evening live streams. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, please go ahead and do that now. That way you'll get notified when the live streams are to begin. Guys, I end every video by saying this. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Also, don't forget, send me your license plates. We're still trying to work on that project as well. If you've got license plates from your state, province, wherever, and you don't need them, send them to me. My contact information is down below. Let's do it again in the next video.